Hey guys, it's Maris. Welcome back to my channel where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different, which is why we have a different background today. I'm just at the kitchen table because we are going to be doing a shopping video. This is an online book shopping video. This was something that my patrons voted on. I gave them a, a list of videos that I have coming up that I'm going to be filming soon. And I asked them to vote on which one they would like to see next. And I added this one as a bit of a wild card. I didn't, I didn't think they would choose this one. Um, they've never made a video like this before, but I think it's going to be fun. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you where I shop for books, my process on how I pick books. You know, I'm always looking for spooky books and then taking a closer look at these books, seeing what they're about. And then also finally, if it sounds really interesting, checking the reviews. So hopefully you have some fun today with me while I shop for some spooky books. Maybe you will find a few books that you wanna pick up yourself. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are a few goals that I have today while we're shopping. And one of them is picking up a few new books that I really want to get. Gothic by Philip Frank Frankesi and episode 13, whose author's name I forgot to write down. <laughs> um, and also some indie books that I would love if they had. Um, A Child Alone with Strangers, also Philip Francazzi, The Crows by C.M. Rosins, Mississippi Blue by Brittany Johnson, Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. And I'd also like to check for some books that I had kind of wanted to get last time I did a book haul, but I just didn't really pull the trigger on that. Hidden Company and The Haunting of Sharon Rectory, which is a true haunting or it's like a, a real account of someone who was living in this haunted building. So this is worldofbooks.com. This is where I always buy my books. And the reason why I like to buy my books here is because one, they're used books. And I just prefer that uh, buying books can be, you know, it can be a little consumeristic, you know, where you're just sort of buying and hoarding books and stuff. And also if I can't get every single book I want, it, it definitely keeps me from overspending or buying too much. Also, I just like the hunt of searching for, you know, books that I might be really excited about and then the rare gems, the rare finds. So there is definitely a world of books, I think, in every country. So I think you can just check it out wherever you are. There's there might be one there for you. Go ahead and um, get the books I know I want um, out of the way and let's see if they have them. So Gothic by Philip. So it looks like they don't have Gothic. Um, so this is Behold the Void, Saculina, Beneath the Pale Sky. Um, I believe Beneath the Pale Sky are short stories and I do not want any short story collections right now because I have so many, I have so many. Gothic or A Child Alone with Strangers is not here. The next one is episode 13. This is about like ghost hunters and it's an epistolatory book about hunting ghosts. So there's uh, video and emails and all kinds of stuff to read through. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Episode 13. I don't see it, but let me check with Goodreads. Craig DeLouis. They don't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through my list and I'll just come back to you really quickly. So they have Stolen Tongues, but the other indie um, books they did not have. The Crows and Mississippi Blue. It's not there. It's really hard to get American Indie over here. Oh, there are two other books that I definitely wanted to pick up um, that I had my eye on the last time I did a book haul. So this is Hidden Company by S.E. England and I want to share this one with you because it sounds really cool. Like really cool. There's a lot going on with this book. I actually have another S.E. England book, but I haven't read it yet. It does take place in an insane asylum, um, which is why I picked it up. But I really want to share this synopsis with you because it sounds really cool. But back to the cover, uh, this some, this is something that really speaks to me. I love this. I I don't know. And I'm just hoping that this, this witchy, 
you know the the wings on the head this like masked character i don't know it doesn't look like a human character i hope it's part of the story so let me just read this to you really quickly because it's so cool so it says 1893 and 19-year-old flora george is admitted to a remote asylum with no idea why she is there what happened to her child or how her wealthy family could have abandoned her to such a fate however within a short space of time it becomes apparent dark forces are at work and she must save herself from something far worse than that of a harsh regime 2018, and 41-year-old Isabel Lee moves into the gatehouse of what was once the old asylum. Chosen as a refuge from the lifelong psychotic attacks, endured as a reluctant medium, from the moment of arrival, it is clear there is a terrible secret here, which is desperate to be heard, angry and upset. Isabel balks at what she must now face, but with the help of local dark arts practitioner Bronwyn, <laughs> face it, she must. This is a dark story of human cruelty, folklore, and superstition, but the human spirit can and will prevail unless, of course, the wrath of the Fae is incited. So this sounds really interesting to me for a lot of different reasons. It Part of it takes place in Victorian England, and there's an asylum. There's also a person who moves into the asylum many, many decades later. There's a dark arts practitioner, and then there's this element of the Fae. So I don't know, it sounds kind of cool and really interesting. And this is one of those situations where it was really the cover that drew me in. I'm gonna add this to the cart. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my other one, which is just the um, the haunting of the haunting of Sharon Rectory. And this one has a really great cover as well, which is what caught my eye. Um, Okay, so now that I have all of my books out of the way that I know that I want to get, let's go ahead and just start perusing and see what we come up with and what we see. There's going to be a lot of things that are very familiar. So what I like to do normally is select um, some books and just open tabs in the window and then and then we can look at the synopsis, see if it's actually interesting, and if it is, we'll check out the reviews. So normally what I'm kind of looking for is like something that looks a little spooky. Um, you know, it has a house <laughs> or it just has like one of the, the very visual tropes, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I have Sweeney Todd, which is good. It's a little hard to read because it's a bit dry because it's old, you know, it was written in the 1800s, <laughs> but it's, I'm liking it for a nice slow read. Have you guys watched this yet? The Black Phone? I'm gonna get around to it at some point. I just got a Dean Koontz book and a, the last Abominable book. And I guess Dean Koontz did a lot of thrillers because I think it's thrillers because everything else I see on here looks like a thriller. <laughs> like I like this cover, but I feel like it's gonna be like a, a, a like just a gothic romance or something. And then I just, I don't even have like the, the, I don't know, like the real, mm, not ambition, but drive to, I guess, to like look into it further. So obviously, usually I'm looking for authors that I know and I love or covers that I recognize from, you know, just seeing it around or looking it up myself. This is a UK site though. So a lot of their covers have a different cover than the US one. The Devil's Liar. I love this woman's covers, Shani Struthers. Like, can we just take a minute and look at her covers? Because I think they're amazing. Like, they're, they, they have my name completely. And I have this one, The 11th Floor, and I have to finish it. I started it, but I didn't, I didn't finish it. And I, I really just want to buy every single book of hers based on the cover alone. So I'm really hoping this one's going to be a good read. I just need to give it a little bit more time, but look at it. That's so good. I love it. Especially this one. I want this. You know, it's like the it's a, it's an asylum. It has like the the wheelchair there. It's just you know, it just looks like session nine. I have this, which I need to read. I saw the BBC film. It was fun. Um, I need to read this. I read this. Love this. Have this. Gotta read that. 
I don't know if you guys remember this book. I talked about this um, in like an upcoming video or something like a really long time ago. It's like a Italian horror short stories. So I really don't like covers like this. They are really nice. They kind of look like really nice napkins or like lino cuts, you know, um, but I just feel like it's never really going to be a scary book. Like this, the Nightwood. Really pretty. But it's not the vibe. It's not the vibe I'm looking for. One of the things that I definitely want to talk about is just like how deceiving some books are. Like their cover has nothing to do with like what the story is about. So this is a book that I had saw a day, like a few days ago. And I was like, oh, I like that cover because obviously it's, it speaks to me. It's like, it looks spooky and eerie. And maybe if it's not spooky, it's creepy. Um, so I looked up what the story was and it, it just didn't, it was not anything like what the cover was suggesting. But this cover definitely, I think, fits more with this synopsis. Lissy de Boucher Landon lost her husband Scott two years ago after a 25 year marriage of the most profound and sometimes frightening intimacy. Scott was an award winning, best selling, best selling novelist and a very complicated man. Early in their relationship before they married, Lissy had to learn from him about books and blood and bulls. I don't know what bulls is unless it's like. I have no idea what Bulls is. Later, she understood that there was a place Scott went, a place that both terrified and healed him, that could eat him alive or give him the ideas he needed in order to live. Now, it's Lissy's turn to face Scott's demons. Lissy's turn to go to Booyah Moon. <laughs> There's so many bees, like books and blood and bulls and Booyah Moon. What begins as a widow's effort to sort through the papers of her celebrated husband becomes a nearly fatal journey into the darkness he inhabited. Perhaps King's most personal and powerful novel, Lizzie's story is about the wellsprings of creativity, temptations of madness, and the secret language of love. Not my thing at all. But I think this cover, this of the shovel, makes more sense. But when we go back and we look, and we look at this cover, I just don't feel like that's the same vibe, you know? I mean, there's probably definitely elements of horror and stuff in there. It's just... That makes me think of something so specific. Out of the dark, tales of terror. I don't want short stories. And this is the SE England book that I have that I need to read. Ah, oh, look at this cover, so cool. Um, love this cover. I have it already though, <laughs> but the cover is not that nice. It's a, uh, it's like an, it's one from like the '90s or early 2000s or something. <laughs> Rather than love of evil. <laughs> Is that? Are those laser? Like, not lasers, but. Okay, lightning bolts, I guess. And is that an eagle? <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Secret Santa. I feel like everyone was reading this like a couple years ago for Christmas. Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's is gonna be is a movie. It's hilarious. There's a lot of Sean Hudson on here. Like Sean Hudson, Stephen King, Dean Koontz, Peter James, so many. I, this is like the equivalent of like when you're walking down the aisle at Barnes and Noble or like wherever, and you're just kind of like looking at all the books and you don't know what you're looking for. You're just hoping something jumps out at you. That's this, that's this. I do need to read an Anne Rice novel. I need to do that because I have this sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna like it. I just keep hesitating because I don't like vampires that much. I mean, if I were to meet a vampire in real life, like, oh, have you guys seen this one? This specific Dracula from the BBC, very nice. <laughs> oh my God, are these? This is, okay, these are werewolves, werewolves. They're fighting. I wanted to get this, but it was more expensive last time. Boop. <laughs> it was like, it was like 12 bucks or something. Maybe it was a hardcover. I did want to get 
the children on the hill, I think. Let's just open a new tab for this one. Now there's this house is haunted. This house is haunted by John Boyne, but I think I read that it's not that spooky and I don't think I can handle that. Oh my God, creature. Oh my God, I read that. Oh, when I was a kid, it was creepy. I was totally creeped out. <laughs> The shadow fabric. Does that look like it? This looks like it could possibly be like dark fantasy though. Hmm, we can check it out and see what it's about. Whoa, look at this storeberry. That looks really creepy. We gotta check that one out too. The ghost of Candleford. Okay, so we have four. Let's go ahead and um, check these out. Uh, Children of the Hill. I don't exactly remember the whole story. So let's just go back to um, Goodreads and refresh my memory. This genre define new novel, oh, yeah. That's what was like making me wait on this. They like, uh, this family adopts this family. <laughs> this family. This family adopts this, this girl who ends up being really weird. Like she doesn't talk or anything and she's super skittish and they, you know, they're not really sure what to do with her, but I guess in the end, like she becomes a monster of some type, so. That's okay. I remember why I kept holding off on this, but I think I'm gonna keep holding off on that because I, whenever they're like genre defined, it says Leo remembers little of his past, desperate for a new life. He snatches up the first job to come along. On a second day, he witnesses a murder and the shadow fabric, a malevolent force that controls the darkness, takes the body and vanishes with it, uncovering secrets long hidden from humankind. Leo's memory unravels, not only haunted by the past, a sinister presence within the darkness threatens his existence and no soon doubts everything and everyone, including himself. Mm, it's not really calling my name. It does say it's horror and supernatural though. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, it wasn't really a gripping synopsis. Let's see what people are saying though. Let's see. It's a five star review. Dawn says, Amazing. Love this book. Can't wait for the sequel. Vivid characters, a great story, and lots of action. And let's uh, see a two star. Morgan Scorpion. It just didn't work for me. I got about one third of the way into it and just wandered off. Life's too short. <laughs> yeah, I feel ya. I feel ya. It, the story doesn't sound that interesting to me, so I think we could just let it go. All right, Storberry by Dan Padovna. 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 That's a cool name. Padovna. Ooh, do you miss the days when vampire novels were scary? <laughs> no, because I don't like vampire stories. So, so I'm sorry. You will have to say goodbye. All right, the Ghost of Kendall Ford. I feel like these are like recollections or something. Maybe short stories. Okay, Mike Jeffries, 3.17. There's no information, okay? Or is there, there's some reviews. Oh, there's only like one actual review, so I don't think I want to risk it. All right, let's do one more round, try and find something. So I'm gonna, so, so now I feel like I kind of get to that point where I'm like, I'm really willing to maybe take a more risk, like a, take more risks in the sense of maybe selecting some books that I don't really think will be my thing, but maybe? All right, what is this? Grotesquery, kind of like that cover, kind of like the artwork, don't know the author. Let's put that uh, on the back burner for a second. I saw Wonderland mentioned on uh, a few people's like best reads, so maybe we'll check it out. I feel like it might be a slasher book, but I'm not sure. Bentley Little, The Haunted. 
I don't I don't know. Oh, I see this this author's name all the time. What's this Monster Island? Uh, the frequency. I'm just yeah, okay, so we have four. Let's check them out. Okay, grotesquerie. This cover is really cool. It is $13.99, so kind of a lot, but let's just see what it's about. I like the title, Grotesquerie. It says, Welcome to Richard Gavin's Grotesquerie, where fear and faith co converge in eerie and nightmarish tales of transcendent horror from a truly visionary writer. The highly anticipated new collection of macabre delights that explore dark realms of the fevered, fecund mind and visits strange landscapes and vistas. These are grim and grotesque tales of terror, modern mysterium, tremendums that open new doors of perception and reality. <laughs> Whoever wrote that is, that's cool. <laughs> Kind of like Mysterium Tremendums. I don't, I don't know what that's a reference to, but it's pretty cool. Um, but it's short stories, and I don't want that right now. Wonderland. One mother's love may be all that stands between her family and enigmatic presence and madness. After years of city life, Orla and Shaw Bennett are ready for the ready for the quiet of New York's Adirondack Mountains, or at least they think they are. Settling into the perfect farmhouse with their two children, they are both charmed and unsettled by the expanse of their land, the privacy of their individual bedrooms, and the isolation of life a mile from any neighbor. But none of the Bennets could expect what lies in the waiting woods, where secrets run dark and deep. When something begins to call to the family under the earth, beneath the trees, and within their minds, Orla realizes she might be the one who can save them if she can find out what this force wants before it's too late. With an ending inescapable and deeply satisfying, Wonderland brilliantly blends horror and suspense to probe the boundaries of family loyalty, love, and the natural world. If Shirley Jackson wrote The Shining, it might look like this deliciously unsettling horror novel from the acclaimed author of Oh Baby Teeth. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think it's supernatural though. It says horror and fiction, thriller and mystery and fantasy. Four and a half stars. <laughs> Tiffany, I really need to stop picking up books based on what some team in marketing has decided to compare it to. <laughs> the connections to Shirley Jackson and The Shining are tenuous. Sure, there is some otherworldly force seeking the powers of a gifted child, and at times the writing is interesting, but it lacks real mood. I think had this been labeled as supernatural or dark fantasy and dropped the comparisons, my expectations would have been more appropriate and I might have enjoyed it more. So even though she does say it is supernatural, the main thing that was kind of hooking me was, the, you know, bringing up The Shining. Um, yeah. I guess I'll just stop. It's gonna wait on that. I don't feel like digging any deeper, unfortunately. Perry family's new house is perfect, except for the weird behavior of the neighbors and that odd smell coming from a dark corner in the basement. Pity no one warned the family about the house. Now it's too late because the darkness at the bottom of the basement stairs is rising. You know, I like that trope, but it's a very lukewarm synopsis. Let's see. Oh, look at here. It's Jason. Jason White. He gave it five stars. Despite its bleakness, Bentley Little's newest, The Haunted, was a lot of fun to read. Interesting. As this is a haunted house book, there's nothing really new here. Yet the haunted house book has been written regularly for close to 200 years now. So what are you looking for? Something groundbreaking? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Give the haunted a try. All right, I will. Let's do it. Um, we're gonna do it and give it a try because I like Jason. I I trust his uh, reviews, so let's do it. Pick it up. All right. Now this one, like the cover, looks pretty cool. I'm thinking, oh, you know, it's gonna be kind of creepy, kind of weird, kind of grotesque. Let's see what it is. And usually, like, if there's someone who gives a review that I know personally, like, I'll see a lot of reviews that Alex does, for instance, and all I really need is her review. <laughs> like, I don't need to look for anyone else's review, really, because I just totally trust her taste. And she's so, she's so transparent and so honest about, like, what she, you know, experienced reading and that it's, it's so helpful. Like, I just know automatically. Okay, so the frequency is by Terry 
Terry Kitto. Kitto, that's so cute, Kitto. Um, death wasn't an absolute end, but a further form of being. Okay. Deep within the bowels of an abandoned Cornish mine. I'm listening. A covert occult group. I'm listening with both ears now. Known as the network protects the living from the dead. Their mediums host a plethora of abilities from telepathy to astral projection because of their connection to an energy source called the frequency. 15-year-old Rasha Ab Abadi and her mother are Syrian refugees granted leave to remain in Goren village. The seaside town sprawls with beaches and coves, but the last thing Rasha finds there is peace. An impossible shadow visits her, visits her nightly and infests her mind with memories of chaos that she and her mother fled in Syria. When she becomes possessed by the shadow, the network intervenes to save her. The shadow's wrath knows no bounds and orchestrates a string of interconnected possessions across the south coast. Having survived the shadow, Rasha eagerly offers to aid the network's investigation. They must all act quickly to unearth its motive before it disrupts the balance between the living and the dead and forge and forges a new world from the embers of their own reality. No choice will be easy for Rasha when thwarting a monster means becoming one herself. I always love that. I, I do really like when you, there's like a character, you like them, you know, you have some compassion for them because they've been through so much. And then they they change in the book and they become, the you know, the monster or the bad guy or whatever it is. And it is it is a strange sensation to to feel, but you don't see it that often. I, I mean, I haven't read, a, read that kind of book that often. This is kind of cool. Let's see what... Um, the reviewers say. All right. Books read today. This story wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, sometimes too, when I'm looking through the reviews, I'm looking, sometimes I'll look for someone who looks like maybe they read a lot of horror. Um, maybe their name kind of suggested or their, you know, their picture kind of suggested. Cause I'm like, okay, I do think there is a difference between horror, uh, people who read horror, like a lot and are, you know, like they, they watch horror movies, they read the books, they, there's a little bit of a lifestyle with being a horror fan, right? Um, as opposed to someone who might read a horror book every once in a while, like when one reaches like the, the, the bestseller list or something. Um, so I think there is a difference there because when you're in it, you see so much of it. And um, I think it gives you a better idea, I think, of maybe, what it's trying to be or what it's doing and you know stuff like that but i think horror has a special little care it's a special thing it's a little special goblin you know and you really gotta love goblins to really get it <laughs> let's see rebecca hawkins says the plot had so many crazy and bumpy moments i never knew what was going to happen next however make sure you pay attention because there are a lot of small details that come back to haunt you later. <laughs> Overall, this was fantastic. I can't wait for the next installments. She just says the author goes very in depth with explaining the dynamics of the network and how the frequencies actually work. It was a lot of world building and I actually had to take some notes to get some of the vocabulary down. Uh, I kind of struggle with that, to be honest. Let's look at someone who left a two-star review. There's only one two-star rating. But it's not, it doesn't actually, yeah, okay. Maybe there's a three star one. Let's check out Shangri Lad. Shangri Lad, that's clever. Um, let's see, they say three stars, and the very last thing they say here is this read may be for you if you love paranormal conspiracy stories with a lot of fictional technical jargon and intricately detailed action sweet sequences. The main characters were very engaging and the plot had a lot of creativity. If you could embrace the network conflict portions of the novel. Ooh, I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted. <laughs> I'm conflicted with that. I, I do like paranormal conspiracy, but I'm kind of scared of the jargon. I think I'll let this one go. Um, I feel like I, if I get it, this is the issue, right? Like I'll buy it, it'll arrive, I'll put it in the bookshelf, and then I just won't pull it out. So let's see what we have so far in our little cart. Okay, so 
We have The Haunting of Sharon Rectory, The Haunted by Bentley Little, recommended by Jason White. Penny Dreadfuls. Okay, I know this is these are short stories, but I really wanted this book before, so let's just pretend it's not a short story collection. <laughs> um, Hidden Company and Stolen Tongues. One reason why I wanted to get Stolen Tongues was because everybody was telling me, have you read Stolen Tongues? Did you get Stolen Tongues? Are you going to read Stolen Tongues? And so many people were talking about this book. So I didn't really find a lot perusing um, besides the... Penny Dreadful book, which I already wanted, and the Bentley Little book, but I'm still really excited about that one book, and I wouldn't have even decided, I wouldn't even ever looked it up unless I was just swimming around in the book stream. So I'm very excited about this. So I hope you enjoyed this video of how I shop online and look for spooky books. This is my process. I it's a little boring, it's a little tedious, but honestly, it is a really nice, relaxing thing to do. And the hidden gems that I have found, it, I feel like an archaeologist, you know, <laughs> digging, looking for books. Um, so yes, yeah, so I hope it wasn't too boring for you. I hope there might be some books here that sounded interesting to you. Um, if you like this video, please like and comment down below. And if you would like to get more videos from me, please subscribe. I would appreciate that. Please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.